We just prayed for uh, these persecuted churches earlier, uh, and it touches my heart. Uh, when I was a child, I just found um, somebody that has visited where I grew up. And uh, it was um, unexpected, and it just is a good thing. Um, so Gideon has been where I grew up uh, when I was a child. So when we used to have a church, uh, in those early days, before 1991 in Nepal, um, that um, we would have a little fellowship of 10, 15 kids, and I was one of those kids, and my pastor would speak, but uh, I remember having a book of uh, Mark uh, and, and uh, Luke uh, just uh, translated into Nepali language, and, and reading them, and having New Testament, Bible, New Testament Bible, and we would have a fellowship. And after fellowship, we would cover that, with a, wrap it with a plastic, and hide it 50 to 100 meter away, so when police comes, they will not find anything. And so I grew up in underground church, uh, and, and uh, my pastor, he, he came to Nepal in his, uh, in 1950s, in his, when he was young, youth, with his wife, and they were first uh, native missionaries in Nepal, and he worked in underground movement. And there were four guys, and they were first Christians. And if you look today, there are churches everywhere in Nepal. God used him, did great things through him, but he did meet Jesus, like this man we just read. And his name is Prem Pradhan. He is actually one of our first missionaries in Nepal. And he passed away in 1996. And I just saw a picture from Gideon that he visited that church that one of the child is leading as a pastor today. And how, like the centurion, as he met Jesus, my pastor through underground churches, so good that we have a freedom to say a word, speak, even dance, even shout, sing freely, express our emotions and feelings and say, God, we love you. You are Jesus, you are powerful, you are wonderful, you are God. And I was reading the Bible a few days ago and I, I, can, I came to across this Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18, it says, forget the former things, and I'm going to do new things, and I will make a way and river in the desert. And I'm thinking, river in the desert? What does that mean? And I could not understand this. I felt like my logic, my reasoning, is that, it's like, okay, Moses, think about it. Moses gets the water from the rock. People those who are liberated from Egypt, slave bondage, they get a food, heavenly food. Eliza gets food from Raven. God uses donkey to talk to his, you know, his people. God uses Jonah. He's running away from God, and then there is a fish God uses. And I said to God, God, you can use anything. You can use me. You can use you. If he can use those things and animals, of course he can use us. And then I'm thinking a desert. And I read in the New Testament, Jesus feeding 5,000 people. So this book is full of miracle. Full of miracle. Do you believe his word? It's really a good question to ourselves. It's like, do I believe the word that he said to Centurion, this man? And so, so we, we look, when I read the book of uh, this chapter 7, there are a few uh, things that are happening. One is the healing of the servant of Centurion. Second is after that you read um, widow's son that was dead and Jesus raised this uh, boy. 
and then the great man of God that was filled with the Holy Ghost the, the greatest evangelist on earth was so discouraged Jesus encourages him John the Baptist and then we read forgiveness of sin of a woman that other people were about to kill her and the same thing with the author here the book of Luke the gospel of Luke you have a, this guy Luke writing and he's of course a Hellenistic Jew he's a Gentile a Greek Christian he might be one of the 70 disciples and then of course we see about him more Paul describes in Colossians chapter 4 14, 14. And, and then Paul says Luke is with me but when he writes he wrote the book of uh, Acts also he writes with the, such a details a lot of details those of you love details I'm not that uh, uh, oh, I don't uh, go after details but those of you love details read book of Luke and Acts he, he does a great thing there are five things we are going to look through, uh, see through this chapter, uh, this um, prayer, this um, uh, just um, scripture that we just read. Uh, first is that being in right place, being in the right place. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> one of the thing is that um, you look, you. I mean, we see when Jesus had finished saying all this. In the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. This particular place in in um, it's, it's it's called um, its other name means uh, place of comfort. Jesus does a lot of miracles right here. Uh, he actually performs more than almost 40, 50 miracles here. Peter came from. Uh, Bethsaida, but uh, it looks like his mother-in-law was from Capernaum. Those of you that have traveled Israel, you possibly have a better geography of where the Capernaum is. It is not, not far from the Sea of Galilee. Um, and Jesus did a lot of, uh, lot of uh, miracles in this place. He drives out uh, evil spirit. Um, he heals um, uh, many sick and oppressed he heals the blind and um, Jesus could not do a lot of things in Nazareth but he did a great miracles in this particular place uh, in 95, 1995 to 2005 Nepal was going through civil war if you travel through Nepal, the buses, uh, the transportation, you do not know where the next bomb exploded would happen be between the rebel forces and the government forces. One morning, I was, um, I was uh, uh, going, uh, I have a, uh, where I was staying, not far from there, there's a Hindu temple with a bunch of trees, uh, and, and there's a police station. And I just passed police station. And five minutes later, I heard this big sound exploded. And my ears, I thought I lost my eardrum. And it was uh, the rebel targeting the government police force. And they blew up that station. And I was, I said to myself, Lord, thank you. Thank you. And this centurion, you know, came to the right place. And th there is another guy in the Old Testament. Moses said, God, um, I'm not going if your presence is not going with me. You know, I always say to my, it's not how busy we are. It's not how much we work. It's being in the right place with God where he wants us to be on the right time. And this centurion was right there. You know, we have a different seasons in our lives and in, in a particular season where God puts us. And in that season, we just need to ask God, do you want me to be here? You, God, am I in this right season? And this man was in the right place in Capernaum where Jesus was doing miracles, signs and wonders. And that, that's what the Bible is full of those things. 
And this centurion was quite, again, this guy was in a, they were respected, he was in a social, quite high status. And they had a different ranks. And, and they were, he was not even from, he was not Jew, he was, uh, he was a Gentile, because the whole Israel was under uh, Roman rule. So this centurion possibly was from Italy or one of, those, one of these European countries. And different centurions had a different rank and they, they had around 70, 80 military under them and the list was 10. And so they were quite, uh, actually they were enemies of Jews because they were controlling land and Rome was, uh, uh, Israel was under their thing. So here Jesus reaches to this man. He, he reaches to this man and, and, <clears throat> and even Jewish elder talk good about him, says he has done great thing among the, among Jews. He has built synagogue. He has helped Jews, a, a Gentile man. What a perfect example of Jesus reaching to an unknown person. I do not know where your heart is today, and you might be in a place like, you know, coming to church for first time, or you might be like, let me check it out. And Jesus is still is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he reaches out. He's alive. He, he, he is alive. And a second thing is that I like to read from verse 2. Uh, there is a centurion servant whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. I mean, if you look at this, this is centurion's servant. It bothered centurion. There was something happening to centurion. He cared about his servant. What he cared, we, we see that the same thing happens, is that when we see centurion was trouble in his mind. This, uh, verse 3, the centurions heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to ask him, asking him to come heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. I mean, he, centurion heard what Jesus was doing. He was healing people. He was setting people free. And amazing, this, what was in Centurion's heart, Jesus understood it. You know, I do not know where you are. If you are looking be, uh, be, uh, to be accepted, if you are looking to be welcomed, if you are looking to be, oh, uh, if somebody cares me, if you are asking questions, it's like, what is the worth that I live for? Jesus still cares because he cares centurion servant. He, centurion was in trouble. So Jesus knows every thought, anything that is in our heart, in our mind. He understands what you and me go through in our life. And so he cares, and he wants you to be, that's the whole thing, he, we invite him in our heart, and we come to his, in his kingdom, and he places us, he places us in heavenly realms. And he welcomes you, and he cares you. Bible also talks about uh, um, a, far, uh, a shepherd going after one lost sheep. Lost sheep did not know the sheep was lost. And, and shepherd go, leaves the 99 and goes after one that was lost and trapped. If you are lost in, in your 
heart and you feel that you are away from God, He cares you. He loves you. And He died for you at the cross. Um, and I, I think, I, 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 I'm sure some uh, few of you have heard my story. I grew up as a Hindu child in Hindu religion. He cared me, and I came to in his kingdom. He loves each one of us like he, the shepherd loved the uh, lost sheep. And Jesus is, reaching here. Jesus is reaching out even today in Afghanistan, North uh, Korea. There are people waking up with the dreams and saying, Oh, I have heard the plenty of testimonies where people say, God spoke to me. God talked to me. God is the one that gave me this word. Right now we are focusing in North Himalayan region of Nepal. Uh, Tibet area. Even this year, we were uh, able to plant two churches. There are people that are lost. And, and we know that Jesus cares, and our mission has to be caring our people. Let's uh, read, read a little bit more. Um, verse 6. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. When Jesus speaks, it's not just the word. Word is a logos, has a life. A rhema word has a life. When Jesus, uh, we read this word, it's not just a book. We are reading, going through. It has a life when we read it. And this man, one word, it's like the, this uh, lady in the Bible that is have a 12 years of blood running and wasn't able to get healed. One touch with Jesus, all it took, and the one word that Jesus spoke, this man's servant, all he needed was one word, one word. And every word that comes out of Jesus, these words have life. Every word that we, st we hold on, this word has a power. His word is sharper than two edges sword. It reaches all, our, all we need. It has a life. When Jesus speaks, we get life. Yeah, and, and again, Bible even says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Bible also says, all the authority has given to me in heaven and earth. This is amazing. This centurion is able to hold his word, trust his word. My question is, how much do we really uh, look at his word and say, God, this is it. This is it. This is it. It has a life. I'm going to hold on it. I'm, I, I'm not going to look my circumstances. I'm not going to look my situation, but I'm going to declare God's word. I'm going to declare, speak God's word. Uh, I do not know about you, but there are times where my situation or the environment can affect me. And I start acting based on the environment. Instead of declaring God's word and believing God's word and, re and relying on God's word. And I do not know about you, but there are many, many times I have said, this is your word. This is what God, God you have spoken. This is who I am. This is what you have spoken. And we beat ourselves by the opinion of the people our circumstances around us, and we beat ourselves like, oh, I'm useless. No, God has declared that I'm his child. You are God's child. And sometimes we just need to take God's word. 
There was a few years back, uh, I think many years back, um, I was in Norway and one of our child was seriously sick at children's home. Serious, seriously sick. And we were given a word from doctor and said, oh, it, it not going to make it, not going to make it. But we kind of declared one uh, God's word again and again. God, you said you will heal. God, you said you will heal. And that child is still living today. And this man, as a century, a Gentile, believed what Jesus was saying. And took that word and make, make it one. As we sing our, as the songs, hymns, you know, it touches us, it, it speaks to us. How much God's word speaks to us? How much is in our mind, in our hearts, we make it as a part of living? God, this is who I am. This is what you have spoken about me. Many times we just try to give up or try to say this, this is, I don't see the way out. But let's declare like this man that believed Jesus' word. Do you believe Jesus' word today for your situation? Uh, another thing is that I also see great humility of Jesus reaching to the Gentile uh, uh, centurions. They were controlling the Israel on those days. And it's not, not just this Jesus reaching out as a God uh, to, uh, or the person to the, his enemies, in other words, that were controlling the Israel that time. I also see centurion being in that rank, being in the uh, Fisher, he is humbling himself, going to Jews, asking for help. Um, Eight verse, for I myself, I am a man under authority and soldier under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one comes and he comes. He talks about the he being on, working under the authority. He, I mean, he talks about Jesus was doing the same thing. He said, I do what my fa I see my father's doing. And these go both guys were under authority. I do not know about you and uh, uh, about you, but the life that we live has to be guided by God's principles and God's word. In other ways, we we cannot make it because the obstacle comes and we just will give up. And and this is this is still. So important that I, I see total trust from this guy for the word, and we see that at the end result that his servant is healed, and Jesus even speaks of himself that I have not found any great faith even in Israel. And so, and this guy, Centurion, believes, acts in authority. And we see the great miracle in his life. And I pray that many of us today, in, in our various experiences, faith, or our journey with Christ, might be uh, young, many years, It is good to ask ourselves, where is my faith in Christ? What is driving me? Do I have the fire of God in my bones? Do I believe God's word? Is it still alive in me? Is Jesus alive in me? Is Jesus doing things as he did in the... Or are we just looking those as stories and saying, oh, he fed 5,000 people, oh, he healed the sick, oh, these are only the old time things. 
No, he is the same God. The Bible says he's the same yesterday. Today, he's doing things. He's doing things. If you ask my pastor in 1950s, four Christian in Nepal, would, God would increase them so many today. I don't know if he would be able to believe it. But every time we declare God's word, we are putting seed in our own heart, in our own mind, and letting the unbelief and doubt, we are casting it out. Every time we speak his authority over ourselves, we are saying, God, you are in control of my life and my, my family, my future. And that trust in Jesus has to be unwavering, unwavering. Let nothing come in between Jesus and us. Let nothing come between in Jesus and us. So we can take like this man, his word, breathe his word, and declare his word in our lives. If so, then we can dream with Jesus and live with him. It's like sometimes we watch movie and we can be sitting outside and watching the movie and what happens. Or we, there are some of us where we can go inside the movie and, and kind of get upset if something happens in the movie. Or, and we, it's like the football thing. I, I've, I've never found it. When I came to Norway, I did not know that how Norwegians can be crazy with watching football. When I went to a stadium, oh, I, I thought they were very, uh, in, uh, not introvert, but they were very like calm and quiet until I reached to a stadium. Once I reached to a stadium, my first experience was that I did not support the team I was going with. And then I supported other team that was playing in Viking Stadium. I found out after that my, my person, the, the one that took me to watch the football, was not happy with me. I almost lost the ride with him back home because I supported another team. And I was in big trouble. But I saw how crazy they were when they were watching football. And they had the... I was like... Oh my goodness, these are not the same people that I saw before. Is Jesus in your heart today? Is he alive today? Are you crazy for him? Do you love him? Is his word is still in your heart, in your bones, and you declare, yeah, I heard this report, but I'm going to declare this. Yes, I heard this situation, and I heard this all confusion. No, I'm going to declare and trust in you, Jesus. And we've been running this ministry, me and Annalise, all these years. And we clearly, every time, say, God, lead us. And this is how Centurion, I believe, believed in Christ. And he met Christ. If you have not met Christ today, I challenge you and ask you to test him that he is good. Test and see. If you are walking in your journey with Christ, check if you have fire in your bones. Are you excited still? Let not only rituals or religion drive us, but let his, him drive us. Keep the fire with him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. that you, change, you heal centurion's servant. And it's not just the healing of servant. Of course, you heal today. It, it changed centurion. You reach to your enemy. Even today, Lord, I pray that reach each one of us in our heart, in our life here, right here in this building. God, I pray that you will just speak to us and be alive in our hearts and in our minds, in our thoughts. Let your word be the sole authority in our life that we trust in you 
and keep moving and live and breathe in you, Lord. Guide us and be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.